Okay, welcome back to the shop and today is just going to be a quick video on what wet sanding is and how you do it. So for this example, I'm going to be using the swoosh stabilizer. You can see I've already done all the work to it. I used carbon fiber for this one and I've already put a gloss coat on both sides. And if you get a close up look, you can see it's kind of rough looking. The edges are all rough. The sides aren't perfect. There's some blemishes in there. And we're gonna use the wet, wet sanding process to really clean this up to a, to a perfect finish. So we're gonna get right into it and show how it's done. So I'm just getting some better lighting in here and we can see how this finish isn't exactly perfect. There's some splotches up in there and obviously the edges are all rough. But through this process, again, we're going to clean this up, make it look really great and smooth. Okay, so before we get into it, I'm just gonna kinda briefly lay out what I'm going to be using. You can tell I've already been using all this sandpaper before, but you can, of course, use it over and over again. Um, I'm going to start with 150 dry. I'm not going to wet sand. That's gonna take down just the really high spots. I'm gonna clean up the edges with that. Then I'm going to move over to 220, and at this point, I'm going to start wet sanding. And then I'm gonna bump it up to 320, 400, and I'm gonna finish it with 800. If you wanted a mirror finish, you can go all the way up to 1,000, 2,000. Um, I don't think they usually make sandpipe paper any higher than 2,000 grit. Um, but basically we're going from rough to fine. And all this isn't really necessary, it's just this will get you the absolute best finish because you'll start with the 150 and then the 220 will remove the scratches from the 150. Then the 320 will remove the scratches from the 220. Then the 400 will remove the scratches from the 320 and the 800 will remove the scratches, so on and so forth. But uh, if you, you don't have to go through all that steps, you can pretty much go 150 to 220 to, and then finish it with 320. 320 is a perfect, more than acceptable finish. Honestly, 220 is great too. I finish a lot of boards with 220. It, it feels really smooth. So that's fine too. So it's not completely necessary, but uh, if you're a perfectionist and you really want the smoothest, smoothest possible um, part, you can work your way through all of this paper. So I guess really to answer the, uh, the basic question here as to what is wet sanding, it's pretty simple. It's just as the name implies, it's sanding while wet, that's it. So normally when you're sanding dry, um, especially with composites, what can tend to happen is all the gunk can get into the sandpaper and the grit and clog it up. And at that point, you're not sanding anymore. Um, you can actually see it happen with paper, especially if you're using finer grit paper. You'll just see it get clogged up and that's it. You're not going anywhere. So what wet sanding does when you introduce water into the mix is the water just provides some lubricant and washes the paper away constantly. So all of the dust and gunk just moves out of the way. You'll see the water, it'll kind of turn like a milky color. That's when you know that some of that dust is mixed in with that water. And it really allows uh, you to sand much better through the higher grits. And one of the underrated benefits of wet sanding is there's no dust. So all the dust gets trapped in the water. So it makes for, it can be messy, but uh, if you do it on like a piece of cardboard, all that mess just stays on the cardboard and dust doesn't go floating around the shop or garage or wherever you may be doing your work. So yeah, that's it. Basically wet sanding is sanding with water and you can use sandpaper that's not really meant for wet sanding. It's just not going to last as long. But uh, most places you go, you'll see on the uh, sandpaper package, it'll say wet slash dry. So it'll, it'll, it's good for wet sanding. And it really makes your sandpaper last quite a long time too. Sandpaper is pretty cheap, but you know, it's always good to use it as much as you possibly can. So without further ado, we're just going to get into it and work our way through the grits. And I'll probably stop the video here and there and give a few tips as to exactly what's going on. But we're just going to work through it and we're going to come back when we're done. All right, so just a little progress report. So I'm dry sanding with the 150 right now. I've just done this side a bit and uh, you can clearly see I haven't done this side. But I'm just taking off all the high marks, uh, cleaning up the edges, making sure everything's looking good. And you can see there's some low spots right in here, those little speckles. Uh, you know, expect a, a whole bunch of those, but um, in the end, we're going to work those out. That's why 
I think starting with dry is a pretty good way because it's very easy to see those. And yeah, just working my way through. You can see a little bit right here. I've gone into some of that carbon, but that's completely fine. I used two layers of carbon um, on each side of this part. It really, one layer is all it structurally needs to be really strong. And the reason I use two is so that you have that ability to sand in to a little bit of that first, that second layer. Um, and that allows you to really get the part smooth. Say I only used one layer and I had to sand through a bit of it to smooth everything out. You would end up seeing through the carbon into the wood core. So I use two strictly for uh, cosmetic reasons so that the part looks good and all of that. So I'm just going to keep going about here, sanding, carefully working out those low spots. And once everything's completely smooth, then we're going to get into the wet sanding portion. All right, guys, so I'm done with the sanding with the 150. You can see if there's any low spots, they're low enough that during the wet sanding process that they'll come right out. I did leave up in here. That's going to be much easier with the higher grit wet sandpaper as it gets wet, gets a little more flexible. We can really get in there and clean that up. Um, so yeah, this is just be going to be getting better and better looking as we go. So I'm going to now move on to the 220 and uh, that should take out all the scratches of the 150. Okay, so this is wet sanding. It's pretty simple. We'll start with the, the back side first. So just kind of get things wet. You don't need a, a lot of water, but uh, I guess when you first start, it will, it will look like a lot. So we, it's just wet. And I'm just going to keep going in this little circular pattern for a bit. And so you can see how this is getting a bit milky and that's all of the um, all the powder, all the dust coming out in the water. And it's great, it stays in the water so it's not floating around in the air and our paper is staying clean. And so you also will notice at some points right here is a little bit I will start to be getting, instead of white milky powder, if you start seeing a lot of black, dark water coming out, that's some of the carbon that you're sanding into. But as mentioned before, I got more than enough carbon for this part, so I kind of expect to go through a little bit of that as I go. All right, so that's obviously looking great, and that's only because I just ran it under some fresh water to clean it off. And the reason I'm doing that is because 220 is just about, um, 220 will still remove enough material so it'll again take out those uh, little tiny low spots that we left. Once you start getting higher than two, 220, uh, you don't take off as much. Like once you got 400, 800, you're really not taking off anything. Um, so after 220, I give it a rinse and then I'm going to wipe it down and it's way easier to see if you missed any low spots when the parts dry. So I'm gonna let it dry, wipe it down and check for low spots. So just from wiping that down, I can kind of use the light here coming through the window to see if, we, if I missed any low spots. This bottom side looks fantastic. I am not, there might be one or two very small ones, but nothing I'm going to kind of go back and dig out on the top. Yeah, I'm going to go a little bit more with the 220 on the top. I'm not sure that one you can pick up right there. So I'm just going to want to get that one out. Now, really, in the grand scheme of things, that, that doesn't matter. But um, let's try to get this as perfect as we can. So I'm going to take that one out. There's a couple more up in here. We'll take those out. And a few more down here at this tip. So uh, when it was wet, couldn't tell, couldn't see that at all. Um, that's why I like to just dry it out real quick. So it kind of shows that. And I can see I do have some other scratches from the 150 that I didn't quite work out. So I'm going to do that as well. So I just went in and took out those 
last few remaining low spots. And so now I want to feel these edges. Um, you don't want them too sharp, but you don't want them completely round. So right now with the 220, because again, the 220 will actually remove some material, uh, is where we kind of want to just get our edges where we want them. And the best way to do it is just by feeling. So right here, Yeah, all these edges are feeling pretty good. I already went around that just a few times as you just saw. Um, and so all the edges are good. I'm going to give this part a rinse and then move on to the 320. It's always exciting when you get this rinsed and wet because it's going to look the absolute best. Um, so honestly, a 220 finish is a totally fine finish. If you just want to stop at 220, that's great. Uh, but we're gonna see how good we can get this. So the the first, um, obviously with the, when you stand sand dry, that's gonna take the longest. And then 220 will be the next longest step. Uh, the higher we get up, the, the quicker and easier it goes. Cause we don't really have to worry about digging out or checking out for any low spots. Cause we know they're already gone. And the edges you can kind of just, I guess at the very end, just hit them once or twice with the higher grit paper. But you can kind of just cruise on through these higher grits. So 320 is down and on to 400. Okay, so just for reference, this is after 400. So very smooth to the touch. A little bit of a matte finish, I guess you could call 400. So we're just going to keep on going. I just rinsed this, some of it's still wet, but there's an example of a 400 finish. Now, honestly, I, I would never go much higher than that, but for the demonstration, upward we go. 800 now. Stepping it up one more time to 1,000 grit. So at this point, it kind of doesn't feel like you're doing anything just feels like you're rubbing a piece of paper up against the part, but uh, it is taking off just a little tiny bit. Okay, so now this is a thousand grit finish. Uh, it's getting shiny, not quite reflective like a mirror, but um, feeling it, maybe you can, from the sound, I mean, it, it's really just completely smooth. Um, it's looking great. I probably could have cleaned, uh, washed, and scrubbed it a little bit more, so there might be some residue dried up on there. So there is, I think, you can get up to 2,000 grit sandpaper. I don't have any here right now, but I do have one other trick that I'm going to pull out here, something that I've been doing um, with some lawn boards, but I'm going to take a orbital polisher and some polish, and I'm going to get after it. And then we're going to have something looking similar to a mirror. It's, it's going to get very, very shiny after we do that. So we have our 1000 grit finish, again, perfectly fine. But just for the sake of video, we're going to take this orbital polisher and some polish compound and get in there and clean it up a little bit more. This one doesn't say, as far as the, the compound go, goes, it does not say what grit it is. But for example, these can be like, 4,000, 4, 5,000, 6,000 grit, really high grit. It's basically sandpaper, but in a, um, in a paste form because um, you can't like make physical paper that high grit. At least I don't think you can. So we're basically still sanding at this point. Um, so we're going to get after it with this. So a quick FYI, you don't need this orbital polisher, it just makes it a little bit easier. Uh, you can do it by hand. It might actually be easier to do this particular part by hand because of those uh, curved tips. But um, yeah, it's, it's the same product. You just use a, you, I would just take a rag or polishing towel and you know scrub and polish away and then take a clean one um, to really clean it up and polish it. All right, guys, so we worked our way up, starting at 150 all the way up to 1,000 grit traditional sandpaper, and then we went the extra mile and polished it and buffed it. And as you can see, that extra mile really took the 
shine to the next level. So 1,000 grit, you guys saw the finish there. Beautiful, totally acceptable, perfectly smooth. And then we went the extra mile and uh, buffed and polished it. And that gave us this next level shine, which just makes it pop just a bit more. So there you have the finished product. Definitely worth all that work we did. One more look at it there. Looking great. I just walked out onto the roof just so we can get some looks at this in the sunlight. And it looks, it looks even better in the sunlight. So there's a, just another look at the finish we can get up to here. All right, well, so thank you for giving the video a watch. Hopefully you liked it, and most importantly, hopefully you learned a couple tips and tricks along the way.